welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video. Thanks for watching. We're back here on this Yeti. Um, this will be the final, final part, final part of the saga. We've got the top, top covers off now and we're just going to go through a few basic measurements. The first thing we need to look at is the measurement between the intake camshaft timing mark and the mark that's on the casting at the back. Once we've ascertained that the measurement between the intake cam timing mark and the casting is within tolerance, which is between 61 and 64 millimetres, we then measure from the intake cam mark to the exhaust cam mark. So I'll get you over onto the vehicle and I'll show you. Right, so the measurements that we're interested in are from between the, the intake cam timing mark and this side of the casting, and that should be between 61 and 64 millimetres. And then once we've ascertained that that's within tolerance, we then need to measure between the intake cam timing mark and the exhaust cam timing mark, which should be between 124 and 126 millimetres. So we'll set the we'll set the vernier up. So the first measurement we need to look at, we need to set the vernier up to 64 millimetres, which is the outer tolerance for a ballpark measurement. And that's between that outer casting mark there and the intake cam timing mark. Or thereabouts. So now that's verified, we go to the, the other and we'll set that up to 120, 126, which is the outer measurement of the two. So that's 120, 125, 126. So we're on 126 millimetres there. In between the two timing marks, so what I'll do... So we'll ledge it in the groove on the exhaust camshaft. We'll bring it across, bring it across, we can see it's where my thumb is, is where the other mark is. So we'll actually get a physical measurement of that now. So go from the, from the actual mark on the exhaust camshaft, over to the in, intake camshaft mark. And that's in the middle of it and the actual measurement is one best part of 135 so it's, so it's about nine millimeters out nine or ten millimeters out so what we have to do now is re-time re it make sure that this marks up that measurement is correct and then we re-verify that those measurements are correct The next stop is to redo the timing and uh, then we'll get the WPS in the cylinder. Right, so now with the engine running at idle, after done the timing chain, timing on it again, uh, we've got the engine running at idle, measuring block 106, measuring block 106 and I've got their duty cycle on the left hand side and pressure on the right. See there, there's the actual fuel pressure going uh, nice and steady around about 40 bar. Desired 40 bar. Actual 40 bar. Duty cycle. You're looking there, about 51, 51% duty, something like that. And then if we we go over now onto the Pico, so um, the black is the reference waveform that we used on the last capture on the last video and the blue is the actual um, rail pressure control control signal now as it's actually idling and running at 40 bar and you stop the scope running you can see there's quite quite a difference quite a difference in the in the duty cycle so it's it's quite happy with that now the DTC P0088 has cleared and hasn't come back and we'll get through now onto the WPS work and we'll have a look at that we'll see what the difference in that is. 
So just to recap on the scope settings, we've got the plug removed from cylinder one, we've got spark and fuel disabled, we've got the trigger in terminal in pin number three um, for the coil trigger to give us a reference, and we've got the WPS range one, no zoom in cylinder one. So we've got the, the same settings as before, we'll just start the scope running so you can see what we've got. The two black traces you can see, the one at the top is the old um, ignition sink and that's the old trace, um, the black is the old WPS trace. So I'll start the vehicle now and we'll see the difference. Right, so let's see what we got from that. So looking at that, is there any, can we see any marked difference? Right, so what we can see here, we've got our, we've got our reference waveforms here. Let's bring it down. And what we can do is we can add a, we can add a different view in. It'll make the screen smaller, but I will make the, P, um, the PS data files available on the channel. So we'll add a view, we'll add a scope view there. Okay, we can zoom in on two of these. Drag our rulers across, one ruler, two rulers, four partitions. And we can see basically here that the, uh, the up ramp of the ignition sink is directly in line with TDC and if we, if we zoom in even more into the exhaust pocket we drag a ruler down where it changes direction ruler across from the left to 180 another ruler across from the left to where it changes direction which is probably about there you can see um, we're about nine, nine milliseconds, something like that, on the reference waveform, give or take, um, before the exhaust valve starts to open. So that's, um, what's that there? So that's 13 degrees, 13 degrees after bottom dead centre, um, the exhaust valve starting to open. And if we look at this bottom scope view, which is the one that we've, the capture that we've just taken, you can see. You can see clearly um, the other on the on the reference waveform. The coil is firing um, virtually on on TDC, and if you look on the waveform that we've just taken, yeah, it's it's markedly different. So we'll do the same again. We'll drag we'll drag our rulers across from the right hand side, bottom right hand side, the green dot. One ruler across. Two ruler across, down to the bottom we want four partitions, and we zoom here's, here's bottom dead centre, this is the bit that we're interested in, so we zoom in on that now, actually probably that was a little bit too much. You can see it's it's completely different. It's in a completely different position. The up ramp there. What I'll do now? I'll go back to a single scope view, um, just to make it easier, so we can actually see. Add the channels back in. Close the measurements. Get rid of the reference. So we look at this now, drag the rulers across, one, two, 
it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be really exact now because we've, we've we've got a, a really different you can actually see the difference there we can we can see a more defined um inlet valve uh, inlet valve opening and exhaust valve closing there and then if you look on our up ramp yeah you can see it's 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 closer to uh, before bottom dead center uh, be, you can see it's closer to bottom dead center so I'll drop that onto our zero line. Zoom in here so we can see it. Drag another ruler down. So roughly where it starts to change direction. One ruler across from the left. to bottom dead centre, the 180 degree mark. One ruler across. From the left, let's say about there, you can see. Yeah, ruler two, we're at 169.7 degrees. So let's call it 170. So it's actually 10 degrees before bottom dead centre, where the exhaust valve is is uh, is opening, and the pressure change is starting to happen within the cylinder. It's starting to equalise to exhaust pressure. So 10 degrees before bottom dead centre, as opposed to um, 10 degrees before bottom dead centre, as opposed to you can see here. There's no no clearly defined. Um, Exhaust valve closing, inlet valve opening event there. So 10 degrees before bottom dead centre as opposed to 10 degrees after bottom dead centre. So it's quite a marked difference. And if you remember, I said it, it um, really what you want to see is that 180 degree mark wants to be somewhere on that upward ramp. See how it clearly is textbook, absolutely textbook. Mid midway on the on the on the upward rise. So overall, there we go. So we've got rid of a, a fuel pressure regulation code um, through incorrect exhaust valve timing. Even though it was timed up properly with the proper tools, um, for some reason they didn't get the measurements quite right between on the cam to cam measurements, and that's the result of it. Yeah, so in, in summation there, what you can what you can say is um, that 10, 10 millimetres difference in the measurement in the cam inlet cam to exhaust cam measurement has made um, about 20 degrees difference in the the actual valve timing itself, which has put the um, fuel pump out of time, which basically it's, it's generating full pressure when it shouldn't be and not enough pressure when it should be, and that skewed that skewed the whole thing, skewed the whole job. The PS data files will be linked to the Google Drive at the bottom of the video description. And thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down, put in the comment section below and let's get a conversation started. We've also got ways you can support the channel now if you look in the links below. We've got Patreon, buymeacoffee.com and a direct PayPal link. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel. You're awesome.